Good evening, everyone. So you may or may not know this week, our Holy Father, Pope Francis, published a new book. It's actually a series of interviews he did. The book is called The Name of God is Mercy. And towards the end of the book, he actually makes a reference to today's gospel, the wedding at Cana. And what he says, he mentioned something or explained a part of the gospel that I never really heard before. It was very eye-opening. He points to the fact that Jesus takes the water and, of course, turns it into wine. But the water that Jesus used wasn't pure drinking water. It would have been water there in these containers that the Jews would have used to cleanse their hands or cleanse themselves from ritual purity. And so thinking about that, what that would be like when I first read the gospel, I was thinking of it, I came to think of that episode of Seinfeld whenever George goes to his girlfriend's aunt's wake. And he's there and they're at the little reception and he takes the chip and he dips the chip, takes a bite of it, then dips it again. And the girlfriend's brother, Timmy, sees him and says, I saw what you did, you double dipped the chip. You put the chip in the dip, you put it in your mouth, and then you put it again. And he says, it's like putting your whole mouth in the dip. There's so many germs and so disgusting. And just like we wouldn't want to eat after someone who double dipped their chip, to think Jesus is turning this filthy, nasty water people's hands have been in into wine. But going back and looking over it again, that's not actually precise. If you really pay attention to the gospel, indeed, he uses these ceremonial jars, but they're empty. He has the servants fill the jars up. So actually, the technical way to look at this, the proper analogy, would be like Jesus saying, oh, I want to turn water into wine, so why don't you go fill up the toilet bowl? Then I'm going to turn that into wine. Because it's basically the same thing. There was empty, but people said, this is disgusting. We don't want to drink out of water that's been in these jars because it was considered impure. Just as we wouldn't want to drink water, even if it had been turned into the best wine, if it was done in the toilet. If we can understand that. We can understand then how the Jews would have been shocked at this. It's why the servants didn't tell the maitre d' where the water had come from. Because he'd have been like, well, you just turned toilet water into wine. That's disgusting. No one's going to drink that. Jesus takes what is considered impure and through his grace and through the miracle transforms it into wine. Not just any wine, but the best wine. So how does understanding this apply to our own lives? I think we can see this application when it comes to our own lives, when we look at our lives, our sin, our imperfections, our impurities, the toilet water of our lives, we feel that it's so disgusting and gross, we don't want to bring it to Jesus for him to transform. But we need to. And that's what we have the sacrament of confession for. It's where we bring the Lord all of the dirt, all of the impurities... And he transforms it into something good through his grace. But yet, over my time as a priest, I have heard so many reasons. Well, people say they don't want to go to confession. Or they're fearful of going to confession. They're scared to bring the toilet water of their lives to Jesus for him to transform it. And so what I want to do today is address five of the main reasons that at least I have heard why people do not want to bring their sins to Jesus to confession. Not theological reasons, but reasons really rooted in fear. Fear of being judged and the shame that comes from carrying of sins around us. The first is this. Oh, Father, I, I haven't been to confession or I can't go to confession because it's been so long. It's been 10 years, it's been 20 years, or it's been since I made my first confession. I can't bring those sins to confession. Well, well there's something that we as priests call catching a gros poisson. A gros poisson in French means the big fish. 
It actually comes from uh, St. Jean Vianney, the curé of Ours, the patron saint of parish priests. He would say, and he'd hear confessions for hours a day, that when he caught somebody who came to confession after 10, after 20, after 30 years, he called it catching the gros poisson, catching the big fish. I can tell you that priests get excited about someone who's been away for a long time. When someone comes to his father, I've been away for so long, that makes the priest's day. We've caught the gros poisson, and the priest is going to be especially kind and say, listen, man, I know you're not going to remember everything, so tell me what you can remember. I'll walk you through the rest. There's nothing to be fearful about if you haven't been to confession in many years. Now, tied to that, a lot of people will say, well, Father, I, I, I'm too scared to go to confession because I, I, don't, I, I forgot what to say. Well, the last time I went, we used to say something, but... We don't say that now, or I know the old act of contrition, I don't know the new act of contrition. So my priest friend who told me one time he was hearing confessions for high school students, and there was one high school student was so scared to go to confession, he said, why? He goes, well, I don't mind telling you my sins, but I don't know my African chicken. Excuse me? I don't know my African chicken. I said, no, 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 it's the act of contrition. It's like the person who says, oh, Father, it's been 10 years since my last confection. Make eclairs 10 years ago? Did you stop doing that? He says, Father, I committed the sin of fortification. Did you build a castle? (laughs) Anyhow. There's no formula for going to confession. There's not a rule that if you don't follow it, that all of a sudden God's not going to give his mercy to you. It's not the Lord of the Rings. You don't have to have the exact phrase to open the door to the minds of Moria. You just walk in and we know you're sorry. And there's not one act of contrition. There's a bunch of them. All you really need to say is, Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy on me, a sinner. You really don't need to say anything. I know you're sorry. And the priest is going to grant you absolution. So please do not get hung up on the words or not knowing the words. Number three. People say, Father, I don't want a good confession because my sins are too big. I'm ashamed of my sins, or, or the Lord's no way the Lord could forgive me. And you know what? I can understand that. But so often when that happens, and someone comes and tells me, I have this sin that I've hidden for, for 20 years, because I'm so ashamed to tell anyone. And they tell it to me, and I'm like, the five people this, this week told me that. Of course, I'm not going to tell anybody else's sins. I don't do that. But the point is, is we get so freaked out about certain sins, thinking they're the worst thing, but everyone does them. We're all sinners. We're all human. We all fall. There's no sin so big or so shameful that Jesus Christ cannot forgive that sin. Christ's mercy is infinite. As long as you're the smallest amount sorry, he is willing to forgive that sin. Number four, and I hear this all the time, I, I don't want a good confession because Father's going to judge me. He's going to hold it against me. He's going to remember that. The truth is, I don't remember your sins. I don't even remember the homily I preached two weeks ago. I don't remember what you told me, particularly when I hear 20 or 30 confessions a day. But the real root is, and this, I don't mean to sound bad when I say this, but you know what? Priests are not reporters for TMZ. We don't work for Us Magazine. We're not there to collect all the good, dirty gossip. We really don't care what you've done because we know people are sinners. We know what people do. Particularly if you've been a priest for about 10 years, you've heard it all. We're not going to be shocked. We're not going to be scandalized. We're there to shower God's mercy on you. I can tell you, priests are the least judgmental people. Because we know what people are capable of. We know what we're capable of. And are willing to show God's mercy. And then fifth and finally, people say, you know, I don't want to go to confession because I know I'm just going to sin again. I know that when I leave, I'm going to do the same thing over and over again. Well, you know what? Maybe you will. Maybe you won't. You can't predict the future. But what matters is that you don't want to do it again. Maybe you will. But at least you can say, I don't want to do this again. I don't want to offend the Lord again. This is true contrition and true sorrow for your sin. I hope you don't, but you know what? In case you do, there's confession and you can go. If Jesus figured that we'd never sin after sinning one time, he wouldn't give us the sacrament of confession. 
But he understands that sometimes we're going to have that thorn in our side. The weakness that we have that maybe we don't overcome. But we keep going there and it keeps us humble and dependent upon his mercy. And so that's the message I want you to understand today. Not only about the sacrament of confession and how important it is and there should be nothing to stop you from going. But in the sheer of mercy to cast away whatever fear you have. To bring your toilet water. To bring your sin. To bring the impurity. To bring the filth to Jesus so that he can forgive you and transform your life. Amen.